One of the many things I love about this congregation is our hospitality. Not just our just enough of too much coffee hours and receptions, though I do love those, but also the way we welcome people in warmly and honestly, even people who might not be easy to welcome. This outwardly open orientation is not just friendliness. It is a sign that the Spirit of God is living and active here. In both the Old and New Testaments, gracious hospitality is closely associated with holiness and righteousness and often the palpable nearness of God. Think of Abraham hosting the angels, or the widow who offered Elijah her last morsel of food, or the communities that hosted Paul as he made his apostolic visits. Today's gospel is an expansion of hospitality. One thing about the Last Supper, and especially the discourses John records from Jesus, always seems to be overlooked despite being right in front of us. It happens in the context of divine hospitality. Jesus himself, after a public ministry marked by many crucial episodes in which he was a guest at other people's tables, finally hosts this one last supper that would change the world. Ordinary human hospitality is associated with the presence of God in Scripture, so we can expect this moment will be even more powerful. And of course it is. Jesus gives his followers two profound gifts that continue to sustain and define us, the Eucharist and the great commandment to love one another. In the discourses that John includes in the Last Supper story, Jesus expands on these gifts, giving his disciples a message of active, unconditional love. Except that he seems to diverge from that message here. If you love me, Jesus said. It's hard enough when a family member questions our love for them. When Jesus says, if you love me, it cuts us sharply and deeply. It cuts to that place in ourselves where we know we have failed to love Jesus, where we have allowed other things to come first, where we have made choices we knew would hurt other people. The only thing more painful than having our love of Jesus questioned is the feeling of dread and shame that comes from knowing we have failed to do so. Jesus already knew the limitations of human beings in general and his followers in particular. He already knew that we will always fall short of the ideal of mutual love, that we can never deserve the love he has for us. Why would he bring it up at this moment when he was about to be snatched away from his friends, when most people would have given up on changing them? But reconsider how we read the passage. Jesus doesn't seem to be reproaching the disciples. Everything else he says is comforting. Maybe we can read it all in a comforting and hopeful light. There are plenty of people who confuse saying they're Christians with acting like Christians. Jesus was more interested in how people act, the choices they make with their hearts and their actions. He broke bread with sinners and outcasts, and he praised even small acts of compassion. We can interpret these words along the lines of, Every time you act like I have shown you to act, my love is with you. I will be with you, for I am love. Jesus is revealing that God will be with his followers in a new way, spiritual like the person of God who created all things and is present in all places, but also deeply intimate and accessible, the way Jesus had been present to the world. Another clue to what Jesus is getting at comes from the Greek, 
There are two words for another in Greek, one that means another of a different kind and one that means another of the same kind. Jesus used the latter. So God will be with the disciples just as truly and fully as God was in the incarnate Christ. Of course, with hindsight, we recognize that Jesus is promising the gift of the Holy Spirit, an event that marks a new epoch in salvation history. The Holy Spirit will abide with us, lead us, and strengthen us, just as Jesus did. The Holy Spirit will know our hearts and minds, as Jesus did, but will not have the the vulnerability and fragility of flesh. The Holy Spirit will be with all those who live in love, binding themselves to love. Since the Holy Spirit knows us better than we ever can, we must be humble in discerning her presence. But one clear sign of the Spirit's presence is acts of love, compassion, charity, and hospitality, the conformity of human hearts and minds to the heart and mind of God. Just as Jesus remained with his disciples, even when they fell short of his love, so too does the Holy Spirit remain with us when we stumble. Jesus had disciples not because he was perfect, though he was, and not because they were perfect, we all know they weren't, but because they kept following him no matter what. They kept following him even when they argued, failed, and misunderstood. Jesus did not expect perfection from anyone but himself, and he is always ready to forgive us. So too with the Spirit, who is just the same, a person of the same God, newly present in the world. The Holy Spirit is not limited by flesh to being in one place at a time, but abides in all who serve the one God of love. However, this same lack of flesh means that the rest of the world can only see a manifestation of the Spirit in our flesh, in our words and works of love. Through the Spirit, Jesus trusts our hearts so much that he allows us to be his successors in the mission of revealing God's love to the world. We participate in this mission. We answer this call every time we welcome, heal, give, and forgive just like Jesus did. Our choices matter, and the stakes are high, but the game is rigged in our favor. The new and undefeatable life of the risen Christ is present in us, again, through the Spirit. Through our relationships with God, we have unfailing support, even when we fail. God is with us so closely that we can truly call ourselves the body of Christ. And God will be with us in this way forever, on earth as in heaven. Through our keeping Christ's commandments, we help the kingdom of heaven break into the world. We rejoice because although we cannot know exactly what life will be like in heaven, there will be just enough of too much abundance And before we get there, we can see signs of the reign of God all around us. And we are right to celebrate them and what they portend. All this happens because we say yes to the unfailing, ever-present love and encouragement of the Holy Spirit. We give hospitality to God, who dwells in our hearts and in our neighbors. And God transforms our love to be like the love of Christ. Amen.